This is episode 105 on our Ammo Training Academy, Essential Car Protecting Steps, where we're gonna coat, seal, and wax your car and break down that process so there's no confusion. Okay, the car is now clean, but it's not protected. Protecting it means adding a sacrificial layer between the clear coat and the outside environment, sort of like putting on a jacket when you go outside. To keep us consistent, let's go back to the one-page master guide. We'll be working from the protect side going upwards. First is the engine. Add ammo mud dressing to the black plastic with a foam applicator pad. Once you're satisfied with the coverage, wipe it down with an old microfiber towel to prevent dust from sticking to it if you happen to go for a drive before it dries. As you get more comfortable and advanced with the cleaning and protecting process, you could have added this step immediately after the cleaning phase and then just closed the hood, but for simplicity, we're doing it now. Please take notice of the recommended application frequencies as these are just merely suggestions. Feel free to increase and decrease as you see fit. Now let's protect the wheels with Ammo Gelee. This is a goopy product designed to protect your rims and make cleaning them in the future much easier. On the master guide, you'll see I mentioned adding gelee every two to three months, but this will vary based on how much you drive, how hard you drive, and of course, the process in which you maintain the wheels in between the application process. The cleaning process we just went through earlier will not remove gelee, but every few weeks of cleaning and heating up and cooling down will require it to be reapplied for maximum protection. As with any detailing process, make sure to have your gloves on and be sure to have a microfiber towel handy before you start this process. First, scoop just a little bit into your palm, then spread it around for even distribution. With your gloves covered in gelee, work your hands into the crevices of the rim until every area is covered. I prefer to do two rims at a time and allow three to four minutes of dry time. All right, so after two or three minutes, you'll notice that the gelee actually turns a bit clear. At this particular point, you know that it's settled onto the uh, rim and it's ready to be taken off. You take your microfiber towel in fours and you really just kind of get in there and clean it up. Now at this point, your, your rims should be really clean because we already, we washed them of course, and then we dried them uh, with hydrate and they're clean. So you can see there's no like black stuff coming off. But again, you don't want to use this uh, particular towel on the paint ever again. So I think I mentioned it earlier, but you really want to designate the towels. You have towels for windows, you have towels for just the paint, you have towels for the lower regions of the car, including uh, the rim. So keep that in mind. All right, if you're asking yourself, do I need to do this every single week, Larry? The answer is no, relax, you're all good. I would say if you look on your uh, master guide, it's gonna be every two to three months, generally speaking, but sometimes I do it once a week if I'm going to a show or I came back from the track. It really depends, but uh, on every wash, what I'll be doing is washing the wheels, of course, and then drying with hydrate. That you do have to do um, pretty much every week or every other week or whenever you wash it, but adding gelee is really dependent on uh, the usage of the car, so don't panic. Once all the wheels are protected, I then add a layer of ammo mud tire dressing to the rubber and wheel wells if they're plastic. Mud is a medium shine product that does not sling. First, apply mud to the applicator pad and squeeze it for even distribution. Then massage the formula into the pores of the rubber in a side-by-side -side and up and down motion. Keep in mind, if you cake on mud and it doesn't get rubbed in properly, especially around the tire emblems, you may create a sling situation, so don't just haphazardly slap it on. You must massage it in and then give it five minutes to dry. Repeat this process on all four tires. If you happen to have black plastic trim like my Ford here, then I use the same pad to coat this area as I walk to the next rim. It's super quick and not an all-day procedure. Now that the car is perfectly clean, we're gonna need to protect it. And protecting it is like putting a big jacket on before you go outside in winter, that kind of concept. Before we can go through those steps, we have to talk about something that's a bit controversial. I don't even know how to bring up the subject, and that's clay. Now, in the next series, meaning Advanced and Pro, we're gonna go into clay at extreme depth. But in the next chapter, we're gonna talk about the common detailing mistakes, and this is one of them. 
um, and I'll give you the brief overview, but essentially you have things in your paint. If you feel your paint and you hear it rough and you feel a little bumps in your hand, that means you have contamination. Contamination is the same idea, you know me and my analogies. Uh, you have blackheads on your nose, right? And then you put that strip on your nose and you peel it off and the blackheads come off. That's the same kind of idea with clay. When you rub the clay with lubrication across your paint, you're actually peeling up the things that are jammed or embedded into the clear coat. And the reason you wanna do that is if you're gonna put protection on it, I mean, you're gonna put the jacket on it, you don't wanna have you know, uh, contaminants sticking out, right? They're not gonna, it's not gonna go in well. It's gonna be sticking out and pushing the, the wax out of it. So this was kind of hard for me to explain, saying, hey, how do I get a beginner to think about this? So clay is useful when the car feels uh, rough, but you don't wanna do it on a regular basis, meaning you don't wanna go to the emergency room if you don't want to or have to. Clay is kind of like in that emergency room uh, sort of thing. It's a fantastic tool, but only use it when it's rough and before you put on protection. So let me show you how to use it really, really quickly. You're going to take a bit of spray wax. You're going to lubricate that. You're going to lubricate the clay. I put it into a bit of a hamburger shape. It looks like this originally. That's why they call it a clay bar. It looks like a bar. You're going to take that, flip it over, and you're going to rub side to side. Again, I'm going to put links on this video to show you two or three or four videos of me just claying and going through the whole process. But in general, I'm using speed right here, friction, but I'm not pushing, I'm not using lots of pressure. What that's gonna do is pick up all the contaminants in the paint and make it, see these little dots in there? It's gonna make it so it's nice and smooth. Now that it's nice and smooth, what's gonna happen is when I put the, the wax on or the sealant or the coating, which we're gonna talk about in a minute, it's actually gonna we took the contaminants out, it's actually gonna to stick to the clear coat as opposed to just being pushed off by the contaminants. Hopefully that makes sense. Again, this is a beginner video, so I'm just giving you a little bit of the information. It's a very good tool, but you're not gonna use it all the time. Um, and we're gonna talk more about it in the next series. So with that in mind, now let's put on our coatings, then we're gonna put on our sealant, and then we're gonna put on our wax, and the car is gonna look amazing. Protecting the paint is the most talked about process on forums, podcasts, and videos. But now I'm hoping you see there's so much more that goes into the car prior to even thinking about protecting it. Now let's step back for a second and think about protection as having multiple layers on top of each other. The first layer is your foundation, or we'll call it the thick fleece. It protects the body underneath. Then over it, you put a windbreaker. It's much thinner, but it's strong against the outdoor elements. To watch the entire video of how and why I created Ammo Reflex Foundation Coat, visit my video section on the website. Take Reflex out of the box and give it an even mix, no hard shaking. Next, prime your foam applicator pad extremely well as this is critical to smooth coverage and application. Prime the applicator until you can see a visible sheen on the pad. Then apply the product to the paint in overlapping motions. You should be able to get about one to two panels covered before you need to remove it. Once you apply Reflex, give it about two to three minutes and you're gonna remove it with a microfiber towel and complete the entire car. I encourage you to do two coats of that. It's gonna make a really thick, strong foundation. Give it another hour to cure, and then afterwards you're gonna put something over it, what I call like a windbreaker on top of your North Face jacket, and that is a paint sealant like this one here. This is skin defense seal. You're gonna put it on your applicator like this. You're gonna butterfly it, which is to squeeze it like this. See how it kinda looks like a butterfly? And then you're going to apply it in the same uh, motions that you did before. Now, the difference between ammo skin and reflex is you don't wanna hit any uh, black areas, uh, trim, things like that. Sealants don't like trim, so keep that part in mind. We're gonna talk about that in some of the common detailing mistakes, but you're gonna apply it in the same fashion. You're gonna go uh, in overlapping motions. You can even do cross pattern or cross hatch, they call it. We're gonna do the same thing. You're gonna do one panel at a time. This is very thick and very strong, so it cures uh, pretty quickly. And then once, it, once it's totally dry, you're gonna take uh, a clean microfiber towel, one that hasn't been used on reflex. I have a lot of red towels. And what's gonna happen is as this dries, I'll try to speed that up for you on camera, it'll start to turn a bit white. You're gonna come in there and you're gonna break the surface tension just with a little bit of a circle. And then once you cut through, you'll feel it. It'll start to slide much easier. And you're gonna flip it over and keep rotating the towel. So you may go through one or two towels uh, during this process. But what this is doing is it's putting a quick uh, layer on top of the reflex. Now, if you think about it, reflex and skin, they're both layerable. So when you 
layer these things on top of each other. You, it's like when you go outside, you have a north face jacket, you have the fleece underneath, you have the, uh, you know, the water resistant or the rain resistant shell on top. That's that same kind of uh, concept. So that's what we do here on cars to protect the paint or what I like to call the skin of the car. Once done, the paint will be extremely shiny. If possible, pull it out into the sun and double check your work by changing the angle of your eye. In other words, get down and look at the paint from a different angle in the sun. I'm 100% sure there's going to be a missed spot somewhere. Right here you can see I missed a little spot when you're removing, when I removed it with the microfiber towel. It happens to everybody. It's just like washing. You're always going to miss a spot. You're always going to miss a spot when you remove it. So the way to get that off is now this is pretty hard on the paint and it's dried. So you're going to use ammo spit spray wax. You're going to leave it on there for, give it 10-15 seconds to kind of let that soak in there and it'll loosen it up a little bit. Then you're gonna take a microfiber towel and just kind of scoop it off. Now it's gonna be a little sticky because it's, uh, it dried and that's what it's supposed to be doing. It's supposed to be adhering uh, to the layers of the paint or underneath this like we just did was reflex. So it's sticking to the reflex right now. And there you go, it just it took it right off. Now if you did it without spit, it'd just be a little bit harder to kind of grind off and obviously you don't wanna do any grinding on your paint at this point. So add a little bit of lubrication, you're good to go. Walk around the rest of the car, Find the spots that you missed, and I guarantee you, you are, which is totally normal. Use a little bit of spit, wipe it off. Looks good, and move on. If you're looking at your master guide, you may be asking yourself, what is cream and when would I use it? Ammo cream is a carnauba wax. This type of wax is organic, meaning it comes from the earth naturally. Brazilian wax, which is the most common form, comes from a tree in, well, you guessed it, Brazil. The wax grows on the trees to protect the leaf from the intense sun at the equator. It of course eventually gets processed with many other forms of solvents, oils, and other waxes until it reaches our cars, but the point I'm trying to make is that it has its limitations because it comes organically. Meaning it doesn't last as long as sealants like skin or coatings like reflex. But what it does have is an incredibly wet look that's hard to deny. The other attribute is, it's incredibly easy to put on and remove. I can quickly wax this car or the Porsche in just a few minutes right before I leave for a drive. Okay, here's another analogy to help you think about how these layers work with each other. Think of the reflex foundation coat as your underwear. It's the protection that covers the body of your car. Then on top of your underwear, we add a layer of ammo skin. Think of this like your tuxedo. It looks great and it protects the reflex underneath. The cream, however, in this weird analogy, is the flower in your lapel. It's really, really pretty and draws your eye to it, but it doesn't last very long. But who cares? That's not the purpose of it. I think if you go into this with the understanding that that is the purpose of the layers, you'll have a great appreciation for the layering process and subsequently the shine and protection it offers. Lastly, if your car happens to have leather seats, use ammo mousse to moisturize and protect them. Prime a new foam applicator pad with ammo mousse until it's evenly distributed. Next, massage the moisturizer into the leather with medium downward pressure and let the product soak in for two minutes before buffing off with a dry microfiber towel. As you do this, look for discolorations in the leather and add more mousse in areas that seem dull or dry. Reapply every few months depending on the age of the leather, usage, and environmental considerations such as heat or sun exposure. Now that you understand how to use the master guide and we've gone through one complete cycle of cleaning and protecting, the next step is gonna be talking about the most common detailing mistakes we go through during these methods and so you can squash them before they ever happen. This is just one video within the Ammo Training Academy. To go through the entire course and to learn how to detail your car properly, visit ammonyc.com and click on the training link.